Okay, students in a lunchroom are discussing the Rutherford Bohr experiment. They're interested in the alpha particle. I'll just draw that as a small particle here. As it is approaching the gold atom, the nucleus of a gold atom, and I'll just draw that as a bigger particle. We know the alpha particle, helium nucleus, is uh, much smaller than the gold atom. Now the question is, you know, what about the velocity? And I'll put a little vector head on this, the velocity vector. Uh, the initial velocity vector of this alpha particle, assuming it's infinitely far away, we'll call that the beginning velocity of the particle then. As it approaches the nucleus of the, of the gold atom, it's then going to come to a stop at some point and then get deflected and go backwards. What about that velocity? How does that relate, okay, to the stopping distance uh, between these two? You know, how close does that particle get? Well, of course, the faster the velocity initial, the, we would expect it to get closer. But essentially, we have an electric potential energy kinetic energy conversion. So the alpha particle has kinetic energy initially, and then it converts itself to the electric potential energy as it comes to a complete stop and then is reflected backwards. So what do we know about these formulas? Well, of course, kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, equals now electric potential energy for a point charge has the formula K. In this case, I'll give a big Q times little q divided by R. And the R is the stopping distance, if you wish to call it. It's the shortest distance between these two particles. We're going to let big Q represent the charge of the gold atom, and little q uh, represent the charge on the alpha particle as it's coming in. Now, what we want to do is get uh, velocity by itself in this equation. And we notice that our relationship is actually V squared. So we have velocity squared is equal to K big Q little q. Okay, and then I'm going to put 1 over R on the outside of that. Okay, because uh, these are all constants. Now that's a half, so it's going to become a 2 as we divide this over to the other side. And then we'll have a division symbol here in mass. Mass will be on the bottom over here. Okay, so we're in the equation, the form of y equals mx. Okay, y is equal to the slope multiplied by uh, uh, an x variable. So you notice, if I graph a velocity squared, and I'll put a vector ahead on that just to clarify that that's not a voltage, okay, versus 1 over R. We should get a straight line. I'll just do a, a little scatter plot here. We should get a straight line, okay, a, a linear relationship. And what should the slope equal? Well, again, the slope will be everything on in front of this 1 over R. So it's going to equal, you know, 2K big Q, little q, okay, divided by m. And again, k is going to be the Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9th.